services today. Uh, a few announcements here. We want to remember Judy Davis. Uh, she's recovering well from her transplant surgery. Uh, she's uh, able to walk up and down a few stairs twice a day, and she'll be going to a transplant house near the hospital soon for about a month. Uh, Danny Carpenter Sr. has an infection in a few of his toes, and he's going to have a bone density test to see if further action may be required. And little Oakley is recovering from her liver transplant, and she will need to have ear tubes or hearing aids and have her tongue clipped. Please keep her in your prayers. She's only five, I think, five months old. And uh, my niece, Christina Maddox, <clears throat> had a stent put in her liver and had her gallbladder removed. And she came home from the hospital on Wednesday and she'll have to go back in uh, seven weeks to have the stent removed. And Kyle Phillips is recovering at home and he's starting to do better. Uh, Paul Lemon is still having trouble standing and he's using a wheelchair more. Uh, Roy Clark is now done with his treatments and that's good. And we want to play for Carol Leeper. This is a customer of Joyce Parsons. Uh, she is being treated at the James for a liver cancer. And I'm sorry to hear uh, Lonnie Tufner's uh, grandson, Rick Cook, he passed away and there will be a memorial service at two o'clock Saturday at North End Church of Christ. And uh, is there any other announcements? Okay, for the events, Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Uh, apparently done a decent job. So, uh, happy Mother's Day to you. Enjoy your day. And Friday, May the 20th and May the 21st, the youth event with Keith Parker will be at Renner Wells 4-H campground. And he will also be the morning speaker <clears throat> on May the 22nd and there will be a potluck after the Circle. Uh, that's all we need to announce on them right now. And there's a sign up sheet in the back for uh, uh, the service for the youth rally. And uh, if you can, would you please help with them? And that's about it. Is there anything else on the event? All right, Mark, we're going to be leaving the sand. We'll turn it over to him. First song this morning will be number 32, but before we sing that, I've got an announcement I'd like to make myself. The year's rally that Ed talked about is coming up in two weeks, and I appreciate everybody that's jumped up and offered their assistance to help put that on. I love you, and I'm, I'm, I love your willingness to serve. I'd like to apologize. Being the director of this event, that it got planned on the weekend that all of our local schools are doing their graduation. When we planned the date, we didn't know when the schools were going to be doing their graduation. I promise you that if we go forward with future use events, that uh, that will be taken into consideration for sure. I want you to know that it pains me to say this. I've heard an awful lot of negative comments in the last two weeks concerning this youth event. A lot. <clears throat> I would direct you to John 1140. 
read a few verses prior to and a few verses after that. I hope that uh, all of you will, will do your best to invite the people you know that, that can be there or want to be there. Number 32. Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the love of my unaided. I need thy strength to Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer at this time. Again, Father, thank you for this uh, beautiful day which you've given us today. And we pray, Father, that uh, as we enter into this uh, worship service this morning, that uh, you would uh, help Elvis to have the, uh, uh, the words he wants to say, a ready recollection of the things he wants to say. We pray that all the songs and, and everything that is, uh, the hymns and everything that is said and done here today will be pleasing unto you. And we pray, Father, that you will be with each and every one of us today as we uh, are here this morning and uh, the different uh, congregations throughout the world that are gathered together today. We just pray that uh, everything that is done, you'd be with them all and everything will be pleasing unto you. We pray, Father, that uh, you would uh, that you would uh, watch over our country, and our. Uh, we just pray that our elected officials would would look to you for guidance and the decisions that they would make. 
Well, we also would like to pray, Father, for the people that's in the uh, war-torn areas of this world, that uh, somehow uh, peace would uh, soon come to those parts of the world. We also like to ask you, Father, to please forgive us for each one of us has sinned against you. Help us to um, resist the temptations that are before us. Help us to take our time or choose our words ki uh, kindly, words, and take our time and choose our words wisely so that we are uh, speaking to one another in kind and loving ways. We just pray, Father, um, all of these things through your Son, Jesus' holy name. Amen. Two hundred fifty nine. Oh, what wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me. instituted in this remembrance Jesus suffered a lot on our behalf the love that he had for us and the love that God had for it has for us is it's like God can't help himself because he loves us so much he had to come up with another way for us to get back to heaven and that was through his son 
So that's why God came up with this elaborate plan. Because he, his mercy never ended. In Psalm 136, there's 26 verses in that psalm. And every verse talks about how God's mercy endures forever. I don't have the words to explain the love that God has for us. I just know that it's there. I feel it. I realize it. I see it in my fellow Christian people. And I see it in God's word. God does not fail. Jesus didn't fail. He went all the way. Matter of fact, he went beyond all the way. Because that's the kind of love that him and his heavenly father have for us. So let's remember Jesus this morning. Let's remember the love that he had for us. The sacrifice that he made on our behalf. And the glorious resurrection <clears throat> that came about after his suffering and death. Let's go to our Heavenly Father together this morning and ask his blessing upon these entries. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to surround this table and remember our Savior. And gain the spiritual strength, Heavenly Father, that comes from you and from our Savior by surrounding this table. As you bless this bread, Heavenly Father, and bless us as we partake of it. In Christ's holy name we pray. <coughs> we also have the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of the shed. <coughs> For the sins of all mankind and children. He just comes again. Let's go to our Heavenly Father again in prayer. Gracious Father, thank you for the Savior. Thank you for his victory. Thank you for all the things that he represents to us. We ask you to bless this fruit of the vine, Heavenly Father, and bless each of us as we partake of it. We pray, Heavenly Father, it means to us exactly what it should be. In Christ's name. This will conclude the Lord's Supper. We also have the opportunity to lay by in store and return to God a portion of the things that he's blessed us with. Why don't we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer at this time. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to come here this morning to enjoy the love and the blessings that we have through you and through your Son. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the earthly blessings that we have from your bountiful and merciful hand. Pray, Heavenly Father, we'll be good stewards of what you've given us. We ask you, Heavenly Father, bless the offering that we have and multiply it, Heavenly Father. Pray every, in everything we said and done according to your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Number 249. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.
709 if you'd like to mark your books. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone. Certainly glad you are with us this morning. Happy Mother's Day to those mothers with us. I was thinking just a few moments ago, Father's Day is coming soon. That's my favorite holiday, but anyway. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. There's a, a, a peanut cartoon and Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown starts talking about 
Um, everyone needs someone to love them, to care for them, to, to support them, to laugh at them, and, and cry with them, and Moose responded, well, that's a lot of people, and, and of course, as Snoopy said, are one wonderful mother. So, there you go. It's good to see everyone. Certainly glad you are out with us. We're going to be looking in, in Luke chapter 1 today, and, and several verses through Luke chapter 1. And when we think of, of mothers, we so many through the Bible that we can talk about, but we're going to look at uh, Jesus, the mother of Mary, uh, this morning. And Mary, all mothers are, are blessed, but Mary was especially blessed. And of all the Jewish women living at that time, God chose her to be the mother of his son. And, and we consider this fact, we ask, have to ask the question, why? What was special about Mary? You know, what could be special about her? And we look to Luke chapter 1, and we see this in Luke chapter 1. The angel of the Lord said to her, do not be afraid. What's special about this woman that we call Mary? Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? Mary's first told not to be afraid, and, and then as you can imagine, she has questions. How is this going to be? And, 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 and so the, the angel would fill her in on how this would be. But we want to look at four different characteristics of Mary this morning. And looking at these characteristics, we can look at so many more, but we only have time for really four of them this morning. Mary was submissive to the will of God. She was submissive to the will of God. We notice in Luke 1, 38, Mary said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Here's her position in life. We have to ask the question, well, why her? Because she was submissive, because she was a servant of the Lord. It is certainly a, one reason that we can see. She says, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary was a young woman engaged, what we would call it, or betrothed as the Bible would call it, to be married, who was suddenly pregnant. Can you imagine that? You're engaged to, to someone and, and suddenly there, there's a child there. Suddenly you're, you're pregnant. You're like, well, how did this happen? And certainly Joseph could protest. Well, Mary, how did this happen? Now, I don't know anything about this. This isn't my child. So it's hard for us to realize the, the, the situation that Mary would be in at the time. And you can imagine the stares that, that she would have and, and the whispers and the gossip and, and, and the comments that would come her way. In this day and time, she could even lose her life. For the Old Testament law that said an engaged woman who committed fornication was to be stoned to death. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 says this, if there is a betrothed virgin and a man meets her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry for help, though she was in the city, and a man, because he violated his neighbor's wife, so you shall purge the evil from your midst. You see, Mary's life could even be at stake. She was willing to be submitted to God, whatever God said. And Mary was surely aware of, of, of these things. Nevertheless, she told the angel, be done to me according to your word. In other words, if that's the way God wants it. 
never thought of it that way. Many times it's, it's we want things a certain way. We're going to have things a certain way. And, and, you know, Mary says, well, if that's the way God wants it, then that's the way it's going to be. Submissive to God's will, Luke 1, verse 39 through 42. In those days, Mary arose and, and went with haste to the hill country, to a town called Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Zechariah and Elizabeth are John the Baptist's parents. Now, they're about a few months ahead of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph here. Notice what happens when Mary enters the house. Verse 41, and when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud voice, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Your womb. We have a baby inside Mary. I'm a firm believer, I'll tell you today, that a baby starts at conception. You, you may want to argue that fast, but you can look in the Bible and it just seems like it does. Well, secondly, she, she's not only submissive to the Lord, but she knew the scripture. <laughs> it, is that important for the mother to know the scripture? I want you to notice a few things about Mary. When she found out, you know, if we're a young lady and we're engaged to, to a man and, and you find out that you're pregnant, you might want to do a few things before you have a child, but obviously that wasn't the case with Mary. She finds out that she's with child very soon and, and not even officially married yet. And, and, and so if she planned on doing all, you know, working at this job or doing all these things before she had children and we're going to wait till we have enough money to have children, we're going to do all these other things before we have children. Uh, God said, no, this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be. And, and, and this is important for her to know the scripture. Now, this makes me think of 1 Samuel chapter 2. You don't have to turn there, but you, you might remember the story of Hannah. And women just seem to have a, a thing when they're going to have a child or, or when they're happy or whatever, they start to sing a song. And, and Hannah sings a song there. Well, we see a similar type thing in Luke chapter 1 beginning at verse 46. Luke chapter 1 and beginning at verse 46. We have this song. There's three points that we see here in this song. Three main themes. The first is verse 46 through 49, what God had done for her. In verse 46 we see, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God. There's a song, it's the teenagers sing it sometimes, that youth events my soul magnifies my spirit. And I, I was trying to remember some of the words in my mind this morning as I was reading through these verses. And, and I have the tune in my head and I even Googled the, the words. And of course, I found every song but the one I was looking for. But it's based off these verses here in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. And you can hear Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he will for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Well, secondly, what God has done for all people, not just Mary, but for all people, he had helped the helpless, the humble, and, and the hungry. Verse 50, his mercy is for those who fear him for generations to come. He has shown strength with his arm. He scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from the thrones and exalted those of humble 
estates. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. And what God has done for, of course, Israel, verse 54 and verse 55, he has helped his servant Israel in remembering of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And so when we look at Mary's song, we, we, we see some things there. We see 12 different Old Testament passages that are reflected in her praise. That, now, this fact is, is kind of remarkable in that day because only boys were allowed to go to the synagogue schools. So where you learn those type of things, Mary was not allowed to go there. But we must quicken our pace through the life of Mary. Luke 2, verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Paul would say to young Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, and how from, a, from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith. You know, his grandmother and mother taught Young Timothy, the Bible. Well, thirdly, she was courageous, brave and courageous. About 40 days after Jesus' birth, Mary and Joseph took the baby to the temple in Jerusalem to offer a sacrifice. There, a man named Simeon took Jesus into his arms. And we see the text in Luke chapter 2 and verse 25 and following. Now, there was a man of Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. Well, I'm pretty sure that the parents would have taken any child into the temple at this point in time. Just so happened to be the first child, Jesus. I'm sure they took their other children into the temple to go through this process. And the man took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. That you have prepared in the presence of all people a light of revelation to the Gentiles for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what he said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel. For a sign that is opposed and a sword will pierce through his own soul also. So the thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. So Mary had at least seven children that we know of, and the oldest of them was the son of God. Mark 6 and verse 3, it's, isn't this not the carpenter, speaking of Jesus, the son of Mary, and, and, and his brother James, and Joseph, and Judas, and, 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 and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? They took offense at him. She was a brave woman, and only a brave woman could face these challenges, and Mary had shown her courage by being willing to accept the consequences of, of being an unwed mother in the day that it was almost unheard of. God needed someone, the mother of Jesus, who was strong and resilient. John 19, verse 26 and 27, when Jesus saw his mother, the disciples whom he loved, standing <coughs> nearby, he seen the scene at the cross. He said to his mother, Jesus said, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to be his own, to his own home. Well, finally this morning, notice 
that she was faithful to her task to the end. Faithfulness is important, isn't it? Faithful at completing a task. Now, I, women, I, I, I'm amazed at women because they, many of them in our generation anywhere are called multitaskers. That means they can do 200 jobs at one time. I am not a multitasker. I can do, if you want me to chew gum, I can chew gum. If you want me to walk, I can walk. Don't ask me to do both. I, I, I don't know, I'm just a one song Johnny or whatever they call you. you know, I can do one job and they say dig a hole, I can dig a hole. You say dig a hole and move rocks, that's two jobs. I need a union contract for that. <laughs> you know. It's, it's, that's just me, maybe that's just my nature and I think uh, many men are, are kind of like that, but women, you know, they, and I think it must be from being mothers because they got to do the diaper and they got to feed the baby and they got dinner on the stove and, you know, all these different multi things going on at once. They learn that in their head. Oh, I can do a lot. I'm going to do a lot at once. And they do that. And, and, and that's fine. But, you know, I think faithfulness, finishing a job to the end is kind of important, isn't it? Well, whether you just do one job at a time or you do a multiplicity of jobs, you know, being faithful to those jobs, being faithful to And here we see Jesus and Jesus' mother. And, and, and at this point, we lose sight of, of Mary unto the cross. So we see her going through his life in, in different spots. We see her briefly at, at about 12 years old. We see her at the very beginning. And we see her briefly at 12 years old when he's preaching in the temple. And, and then we see her at the beginning of his ministry when she encourages him to, to begin his ministry, to turn the water into wine. And, and we see her briefly in different points. And you can see Mary standing there at the cross looking at her son. Probably with tears down her eyes. You can see her maybe cradling her arms as she recalls holding him as a tiny baby. On a hill called Golgotha, Mary at last understood the word spoken years before, and a sword would pierce even your own soul. Maybe she understood from the very beginning that, that, that having the Son of God, that, that, that he would have to die in, in, in this type of a form, and, and, and she would only get him for so many years, and, and that he was a blessing from day one for every single day, but she had to see the task through to the end. But we see Acts chapter 1, verse 14. All these, with one accord, were devoting themselves this is after the death of Jesus. In, in that after he had spent 40 days on the earth and, and, and risen up, you have, you have this point, they're all with one accord, devoting themselves to prayer together with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. We find her with the other Christians devoting themselves. When we look at these characteristics that we looked at this morning, we, we, we notice that, that she's submissive to the will of the Lord. But what a wonderful characteristic that is. It, it would have been interesting if she wasn't submissive, that if she put up some resistance to the will of the Lord. She said, no, God, I don't want to do it your way. I want to do it my way. My way is more important. My will is more important than your way. But she wasn't. She was submitted. Whatever you say, God, we'll do it your way. And one reason she was probably submissive is because she knew the scripture. She knew the scripture enough to make a song out of 12 Old Testament passages. That's pretty good, isn't it? She was brave, courageous. Other people would laugh at her and talk about her and say things about her. She was brave and courageous. She took Jesus in for the sacrifice, more or less to be dedicated in the temple. And finally, she saw the job through to the end. These characteristics would help anyone succeed in 
ask them why, but more importantly, they will qualify anyone to be used by God in his service. We're grateful for women, we're grateful for mothers. But when we think of that, we think of strong Christian leaders. Normally, the, the, the strong Christian leaders encourage to be the man, and the man should be a strong Christian leader and, and the head of the house and, and leading that. But mothers are, are silently in, in the background, and I've preached at churches many times where we'll have 30 or 40 ladies and three or four men. If it wasn't for the encouragement of the strong Christian ladies, most particular churches would be nowhere. They're important. Paul seemed to have, when you look at the apostles' writing, and especially when you look at Romans chapter 16, he had women that were more or less silently in the background helping him. In many situations, they didn't rise to the front or, or were in the front of the line, but they seemed to be there and helping with, with his ministry and, and the things he did. This morning, if you're not a Christian, we encourage you to do that. I remember years ago, you could almost say that's what my mother would want. You know, my parents were, were interesting because they wanted all the things that, that you would want out of life. They'd want you to grow up and do well for yourself and, and get it, make a good living and, and make friends and buy a home and, and, and all those things that, that parents were generally like. But, you know, if you have priorities, they had a higher priority than that. Because if, if you didn't make a good living, that's okay too. If you didn't have your own house, that's okay. If, if you didn't have, you know, if you had a struggle through life, that's fine. Because they did. <coughs> but what's, what's important is your relationship with God. I would hate to, as a father, raise a son and say, well, I want you to go out and make a good living. I want you to marry a good wife. I want you to do all these things, but I never encouraged their relationship with God. Because so I think that's the most important thing a parent, a mother, or father can encourage is the relationship with God. And this morning, when we think about our relationship with God, where is it? Is it not existent? Maybe this morning is a good time to start that relationship, to become a Christian, to, to be baptized, having your sins washed away. And saying, yes, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to follow it through. Or maybe you've done that and you need to come back. We'll pray for you. Would you want you to come as we stand? And as we sing. While we pray. While we believe. While we
Once again, it's good to see everyone out this morning. I'd certainly like to thank Elvis for that good lesson. Um, I'd like to add one further comment. Uh, my statement this morning was not meant to gain encouragement for me or for the elders. It's meant for you to encourage other people. Um, is there anything else that needs to be announced? If you'll bow with me, we'll have a prayer and we'll be dismissed. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful for the day that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for the faithful Christian mothers who brought their children up in, in the church and are, are doing so today. We pray, Father, that you will bless their efforts. We pray, Father, that you will be with those mothers who, who haven't turn to you yes they might understand the gravity of their position and the power that they have to bring others to you Father we pray that you will be with us as you leave here or as we leave here that you will give us safe passage to our homes We ask, Father, that you will be with us as we go about our lives. Help us, Father, never to doubt your power and glory and grace. Father, please show us your mercy when we do. Help us, Father, always to be growing servants to you. It's through Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.